All right, so solving this simple algebra equation is not that difficult if you remember how to work with basic decimals and fractions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. We have 1 over x is equal to the square root of 0.25, and we're trying to solve this equation for x. So x is going to be equal to one of these over here. We do have a multiple choice question, which is always awesome when it comes to mathematics. But uh, let's take a look at our answer. So x is equal to either a, 0.1, b, 1, c, 2, or d, 4. All right, so once again, no calculators. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I've been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, a pretty straightforward algebra equation. Not too much going on here. And definitely, this is not that difficult to solve without a calculator. All right, so 1 over x is equal to the square root of 0.25. What is x equal to? Well, let's take a look at the correct answer right now. x is equal to 2. So the correct answer is C. And if you got that right, well, you definitely get a happy face and A plus, a 100% and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic proportions with square roots and decimals. And uh, that's outstanding, all right? But the key to really figuring this out is to knowing how to deal with uh, this square root of 0.25, right? So if you can figure out this part of the problem, I think most of you can figure out the rest. But let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. All right, so here is the problem. And uh, for those of you that are still math students or still have to take math exams, a lot of you watching these videos are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I never have to take a math test again. The last time I took a math test was 1967 or something like that. So that is fantastic. But uh, for those of you that still have to take math exams for whatever the case is, and uh, you may not even be in school, you might be going for some sort of certification or some sort of uh, training program or entrance into some sort of uh, college or whatnot. Yeah, you still have to take these exams. So what should you do if you encounter a problem like this and you have no idea what to do? Well, if you're saying, I know what I'm going to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm going to guess. Well, I agree. That's what you should do. But when you guess, okay, when you look at a math problem, especially a multiple choice math problem, and it's an equation, okay, so look at the problem. If it's an equation, well, you can do more than guess here. Okay, you could, In other words, you still have a 1 out of 4 chance to get this problem right. But you can really get a 100% chance of getting this right by checking your answers. Now, this is really important, especially if you're allowed to use a calculator on your exam. So what you can do is simply just take the square root of 0.25 on your calculator and then start pl uh, plugging in numbers for x. So when you plug in x for 2, so when x is 2, this fraction over here is going to be 1 half. You'll see that 1 half is going to be equal to the square root of 0.25 on your calculator. So this is how you can always get the right answer when you're faced with an equation on a multiple choice question. You plug in your answers until you find the one that works. But of course, if this wasn't a multiple choice question, I just kind of took away all of this. I said, hey, solve this thing. Well, then we simply need to know the mathematics. All right, so as I keep indicating, we want to know how to kind of uh, make this square root of 0.25 an easier number to work with. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. So uh, we have 1 over x is equal to the square root of 0.25. All right, so what's another way that we can write the square root of 0.25? Matter of fact, what is another way we can say this decimal right here? So I'm saying 0.25, right? That's what I'm saying, 0.25. But if I asked you, uh, tell me another way we can express this decimal. What's another way we can say this decimal? This is a kind of a little bit of a hint here, and I'll actually tell you what to be thinking about 
and I'm talking about place value. Now, you might be saying, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, I think I remember uh, place value way back in the third grade, but I totally forgot. Well, this is that business where you're talking about the tenths place, the hundreds place, uh, the uh, uh, thousands place, all that stuff, right? This is what I'm talking about. So what's another way we can say 0.25? Well, let's talk about that right now. All right, so 0.25 is the same thing as 25 hundredths, okay? So you could say this decimal, uh, 0.25, as 25 hundredths. So the 2 is in the tenths place, and the 5 is in the hundredths place. So this decimal, uh, again, could be expressed as the decimal 25 hundredths, which means 25 over 100. It's 25 hundredths. So if you were to, um, uh, basically asked, hey, take 0.25 and write it as a fraction, the way you do that is to actually say the decimal. This is 25 hundredths, so write that as 25 over 100. Okay, so now that we have a 0.25 is equivalent to the fraction 25 over 100, we can simply reduce this fraction to 1 fourth. All right, so this 0.25 really is the same thing as a 1 fourth. And this is going to make this problem much, much easier to deal with. So now we can think of the problem this way. So instead of 1 over x is equal to the square root of 0.25, uh, the equivalent problem is 1 over x is equal to the square root of 1 fourth. All right, now if this helps uh, some of you out, well, I would encourage you to pause the video and see if you can solve this equation for x. Now we already know that the answer is x is equal to 2, right? Because I already showed you uh, the result. But how do we solve this equation? Well, we're going to talk about that. But uh, first, I'm going to show you this, which is an invitation to support this YouTube channel, really to support my work. And my work is all about encouraging people to stick with mathematics, okay? So, uh, so many people struggle in math and uh, really, you know, that can happen for a number of different reasons. Probably the number one reason people struggle in math is because they tell themselves, hey, I'm bad at math. You know, every day when they go into the math class or they're doing a math problem, the first thing that pops into mind is, yeah, I probably won't get this right because I'm not good at math and I hate math. I don't like math. Listen, if you want to learn math, if you need to learn math, the number one thing, the first thing you must do is to make sure you have a good mindset. And what does that look like? Well, it basically is positive self-talk. Be like, yes, I can do this stuff. I'm smart enough. I just need to work hard and I need great math instruction. Okay, this is the key. This will make all the difference uh, in terms of your ability to be successful in math. You can learn this stuff, but you have to have a good attitude. Okay, but obviously you gotta be willing to do the work. And most importantly, uh, you need great, uh, clear, comprehensive math instruction. So if you really need math help beyond my little YouTube videos, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I'm going to leave a link to some math notes. You can find that in the description as well. But uh, basically, uh, for me, what I'm trying to do is really uh, encourage people to never, ever give up on themselves or their dreams if math is involved. And I can only do that when I get people like yourself to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's go back and uh, finish up this problem. So now we have 1 over x is equal to the square root of 1 fourth. All right, so we got rid of the decimal, but uh, now we have this square root of a fraction. So how do we deal with, uh, with this? Well, this is not that difficult. Uh, we have one big square root over a fraction. And what we need to understand is there is a property of square roots. So when we're taking the square root of one big fraction, what we can do is take the square root of the individual numerator and denominator. So in other words, we can break this up. And instead of one big square root, we can write this as the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And likewise, if you have a problem that looks like this, you can write it this way. Okay, so this property works both ways. But this is going to be awesome because here, I can write the square root of 1 fourth as the square root of 1 over the square root of 4. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So now, instead of the square root of 1 fourth, well, this is equivalent to 1 half. All right, so this is going to make this problem super easy now because here we have 1 over x is equal to the square root of 1 fourth. We know that this is now equal to 1 half. So here is our problem, okay? 1 over x is equal to 1 half. Now, before I show you this uh uh, the remaining algebra to solve for x. Can you just look at the problem 
and tell me what the answer is. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think I know what you're talking about uh, because these numerators are one. Okay, we're, we're saying that we have one fraction that's equal to another fraction. Well, if the top numbers, the numerators are exactly the same, and these fr uh, two fractions are exactly the same, well, the denominators must be exactly the same, right? If this thing is equal to this thing and the numerators are the same, well, x must be equal to 2 because 1 half is equal to 1 half. It's not 1 third is equal to 1 half. It's got to be, remember, in an equation, when you see an equal sign, okay, what that means is that the left-hand side of that equation is the same as the right-hand side i.e. 3 is equal to 3, 1 half is equal to 1 half. Okay, these are true equations, and the solution to an equation is the value that makes this statement true, and the only value that's going to make uh, this statement true is x is, equal to two, uh, x is equal to 2, so we have 1 half is equal to 1 half. So hopefully, you can just kind of look at this and say, all right, what, what do I need to plug in here in order for this to be true? Well, obviously, the answer is 2. But we can take this a step further because what we have here is two equal fractions. And when you have two equal fractions in mathematics, you have something called a proportion. So let me show you something here real quick. So let's take the fraction uh, 1 half and let's write another fraction that's equal to 1 half. Uh, something, uh, I don't know, completely random. How about 5 over 10, right? So 5 over 10, this is the same thing as 1 half. 7 over 14, 3 over 6, there's any number of different fractions. But these two fractions are equal. Now, of course, uh, in term, equal in terms of value. But they don't look the same, but they are equal. Well, when you have two equal fractions in mathematics, this is called a proportion. And when you have a proportion, what's true is something called the cross product. In other words, when you cross multiply 2 times 5, like so, this is going to be equal to the cross product here, 1 times 10. So you can see that 2 times 5 is 10. 10 is equal to 10. So when you have a proportion, which is two equal fractions, the cross product is true. So we can simply take the cross product, and uh, this is going to be very easy. So uh, x times 1 is x, and 1 times 2 is 2. So x is equal to 2. All right, so a pretty straightforward um, uh, equation to solve. And as I indicated, I think the real key here for most people is uh, figuring out this decimal part of the problem, okay, the square root of 0.25, because probably most people, you know, express decimals, you know, in terms of saying point, okay, 0.25, even myself, right? But, you know, if you can kind of get in the habit to think about place value and say, oh, this is 25 hundredths, or, you know, this is like three tenths, well, that is going to be kind of a good um, uh, thing because place value comes up over and over again, not just in basic math, but in algebra as well. All right, so definitely don't feel bad if you got this problem wrong. Math is about trying, making mistakes, and learning from your mistakes. But to, again, the key to being successful in math is having a great attitude. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.